So I acknowledge those two points, but I'm also wondering whether there has been a fundamental shift in thinking towards China in the US. I mean, what we are seeing right now is the manifestation of, you know, uh, actions right uh, targeted at China, but they don't happen overnight. No. So this must have been brewing for some time. And I'm going back to the 1970s when the United States formally recognized China, right? Yep. Um, and the PRC became the official government and the ROC, uh, well, is now <laughs> in a bit of a quagmire or a state of uh, uncertainty, right? Right. And perhaps the entry of China into the world uh, economic institutions was premised on a certain set of beliefs mm -hmm. which have not materialized today. And perhaps what we are witnessing is, you know, a sort of um, scaling back, uh, maybe withdrawing things that have been extended to China on those beliefs, right? And in fact, I have overheard, or rather I've heard in some context about, you know, the move towards stripping China of the preferred nation status. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not familiar with trade law, so mm -hmm. I really don't know what's the implication of that. Mm -hmm. But I would like your thoughts on whether we are actually witnessing something that's more fundamental than just, um, you know, appeasing the local electorate. Thank you. Well, the answer to your question is yes. Um, and, and, the, and the preferred national trade treatment is MFN under the WTO. Before, they could, before the US could agree on the terms of China's accession, they had to first get the Congress to lift this discriminatory treatment. They had to do the same thing with Russia, by the way. Um, and I think, and I can remember this, um, in 2001, in Doha, at the ministerial conference, when China's and Taiwan's accessions were approved on consecutive days, uh, nobody was saying this was a troublesome or bad thing. No one. It's equally true that I don't think there was a single person, including the Chinese minister, Xi, who thought that China would be the tremendous economic powerhouse that they became. I don't think anyone envisaged that. Um, and I can remember talking to Mr. Long, and he was very worried about exposing China's nascent industries to the ferocious competition that would come from Japanese, American, European companies. Um, and when I spoke to him 10 years after that, he said, well, you know, if you want to be the best, you got to play with the best. And I didn't know that at first. I just kept thinking our poor companies are going to be steamrolled. And they responded. I mean, you know, all credit to China. But there was this feeling somehow that if China entered into this system, they would become more like a Western country, to your point. They would be more open. They would be um, more democratic. That might have been a naive view to hold at that time, but that was a view that was, you know, not um, uncommon.